I am racing through the hospital, answering my pager about a sick patient on the ward. It's 3pm on a sunny Sunday. At this very moment, my on-call phone rings as well from ED. Another reminder, I have 10 patients waiting to be seen. I stop in my tracks. I check my radio pulse. It's beating at 150 beats per minute. It's times like this that I question... Should I have been an engineer instead? This is the type of video that I wish someone would have shown me before I had to choose between medicine and engineering. Hi everyone, I'm Eunice and I'm a junior doctor working in New Zealand. Now disclaimer, I am obviously not an engineer, I've not worked as one before, so this video is heavily subjected to my own personal opinion, as well as opinions of my friends and family who are engineers. Watch to the end if you want to see a useful flowchart that will tell you which career suits you best. On the surface, engineering and medicine seems like pretty different different careers, but they're actually more similar than you think. Because the chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably someone who's pretty smart, got decently good grades, you're a logical thinker, and you want a well-paying, stable job. So what are the similarities? Okay, here's number one. They both require logical reasoning and use sets of rules and algorithms to solve really complex problems. For example, in electrical engineering, the basic equation Ohm's law, which is voltage equals current times resistance. Now, this is a pretty fundamental equation that even my dad who is a retired electrical engineer now he's still using this equation lots when he's troubleshooting electrical issues at home and seems to always work not that I know what's going on. Similarly, in medicine, doctors use a set of protocols to treat certain diseases. For example, for skin infections, if they're simple cellulitis, we'll go for flucloxacillin. And if it's hospital-acquired pneumonia, the first thing we think of is augmentin. Number two, they both provide the opportunity to specialize in lots of different fields in this one career. Medicine, you can specialize in GP, psychiatry, surgery, medicine, and then in engineering as well, there is civil, electrical, software, you get the gist. Number three, both of these careers are considered very safe in terms of job security. But in recent years, with the economy downturns as well as tech companies restructuring, we're seeing a higher rate of layoffs, especially in software engineers. I think last year it was something like great than 10 percent whereas for more traditional engineering roles i think those percentage are a lot lesser and for doctors the layoff rates are extremely extremely low that's because there is always a demand for physicians and simply people quit rather than being laid off if you found that this video is pretty interesting so far, make sure you hit the like button and let me know. This is what you guys have been waiting for. This is the flowchart that I would have used to choose between medicine or engineer if I had the chance to do it all over again. Now let's get to my computer. Here's question number one. Are you introverted naturally? And if your answer is yes, then I would highly recommend engineering because it often does involve more solitary analytical work and you spend a lot of time on your own, I find. And if you're very very introverted and you love people, interactions give you energy, then I would highly recommend doing medicine because this job obviously it's all about people. Sure there's always going to be exceptions right? There are medical specialties that require a lot less clinical contact and those are clinical pharmacology, radiology, pathology. As with engineering the higher you climb up the ladder the more you find yourself in management roles and hence lots and lots of communication, lots of people skills are required. So yeah, if I haven't already mentioned, this video is highly, highly generalized. So take it with a grain of salt. This is question number two. How do you deal with highly stressful scenarios? All jobs are stressful, but if you think you thrive in high stress scenarios, then I would recommend medicine to you because it involves handling lots of high pressure scenarios, making life or death decisions very quickly and accurately. Almost on a day-to-day -day basis and if you prefer more chilled predictable working environments then I think engineering might be more suitable because I do think that the stresses around this job usually is around project deadlines meeting clients expectations these stresses are more predictable in terms of timing and it's cyclical rather than constant here's question number three do you like helping others now this is obviously such a cliche question a lot of the med school entrance 
questions interviews you hear a lot of people who answer these questions will say i want to be a doctor because i want to help people you can help people in a multitude of professions and it is not unique to medicine i think a better question is rather in what vehicle would you like to serve and help others if you would rather a direct impact a face-to-face -face sort of interaction then medicine would fit that more so than engineering because in medicine we are in a very privileged and in a very unique position in order to help people in their most vulnerable states and hopefully get them feeling better whereas if you like to help people behind the scene and work at a much larger scale in operation then engineering is a better fit because you're providing more technical solutions and helping a lot more people at once and of course you are behind the scenes you're sort of like the underdog you probably don't receive as much credit as you should do question number four how important is it to you to have a job that is seen as high status or highly regarded i.e a prestigious job now you have to be pretty honest with yourself about this i myself have a very unhealthy need to feel important and to feel significant. Whether it is to prove something to my family or to my relatives or to myself, even on my Clifton Strength test comes up number one. I don't know if you can see that. It says, significance. Both engineering and medicine are highly respectable jobs but it's pretty safe to say that when me as a small Asian girl pull out the hey I'm a doctor card they're like whoa didn't expect that you must be like pretty smart or you must make a lot of money. This is question number five. Ask yourself this does work come first or does you come first? Straight away if your answer was like nah -uh, of course I come first balance is the most important thing then engineering is a much more suitable job because you're expected to work 40 hour work weeks it's pretty predictable of course mine is over time the leftover time that you have is truly your time because in order to do medicine you have to have a pretty high level of commitment to the job one it requires you to work long hours without being recognized for it you're expected to work weekends night shifts public holidays after work you're also expected to work on your extracurricular things to boost your CVs to gain brownie points in order to increase your chances to get onto certain training programs and that's like doing research mentoring other people just a lot of little things that takes up your time even after work and that just seems to be the norm for all doctors and no one really complains about it Besides physical hours, let's talk about family planning because that's pretty important, especially for gals. The average age for family planning for engineers is late 20s to your early 30s. This is the age where you're expected to have achieved financial stability, pretty good work-life balance, probably already on your first house. For doctors, because of their training schedule, there's not much career stability, not a lot of financial security until you're in your late 30s or even early 40s. But obviously this is of the generalization for example i have a friend who is two years out of medical school so he's a year younger than me and he's already got his first child there are outliers everyone does things differently let's move on to question number six how do you feel about picking a job where you have to keep studying and sitting exams even after you graduate i know people have mixed feelings about this but if you like to be a lifelong student lifelong learner then medicine is right up your alley i just used to remember that my seniors when I was a medical student told me that medical school exams are literally the easiest set of exams you'll ever sit in your whole career and they are right the competition only gets fiercer after you leave medical school and the content is way harder and from there you're competing with the cream of the crop which is like you know the best of the best in order to get on to very limited spots on the training program so not only are you working on these extracurricular things after work you also have to study for exams where most of the training programs you only get three tries and if you don't get in on your three tries then you're not allowed to apply for that training program ever and I think that's pretty harsh especially if you've worked all these years to try get onto the training program like 
there's a lot of work that goes behind that. If that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, you prefer less ongoing studies, then engineering is more suitable. There are not as many mandatory exams, but of course there are some courses, some things that you have to do in order to keep up your practicing license, but I think that's pretty common in lots of different professions, so that's not unreasonable. Some people also take their time to upskill after work in order to widen their scope so that they have more choices in their careers. Here comes question number seven. How important is it for you to make lots and lots of money in your future job? Both fields can be pretty lucrative. Here are some of the numbers that I'm about to go through with you. The starting rate for doctors is something like 85 to 100k per year and this includes on calls. So here I'm talking about weekends, public holidays, night shifts, that sort of stuff. For engineering, the starting rate is 60k to 75k per year. Let's talk about the maximal potential earn for doctors and engineers. Doctors have the potential to earn pretty high overall incomes, particularly if you're a specialist doctor and work in private practice, your income can be expected to exceed around 400k New Zealand dollars per year and 250k New Zealand dollars for general practitioners. Engineers also have pretty strong earning potentials, especially in senior roles. Top earners are reported to earn about 200 to 250k annually. Honestly, as I'm recording this video, I'm also doing this flowchart myself and I'm sitting 50-50. But I do feel like early on in my high school years, I would have been more like 90-10 leaning towards medicine but I feel like as I age like my stamina to working longer hours are starting to fade a little and my priorities are also shifting as you know I'm getting older but to this day I am very glad and I'm so grateful that I'm still doing medicine and I honestly can't see myself doing anything else definitely can't see myself doing engineering so if you were like me you're definitely thinking yeah yeah medicine's definitely what I want to do then you must watch this video next because if you don't you may end up regretting doing medicine and be left with a huge student loan debt see you in the next video